AI is already part of our everyday lives. Today in Sydney, it'll be raining. From checking the weather in the morning... Here's the latest news. ..to mapping our way to work. Use the right lane to turn right on Madison Road. And now, generative AI, which is everything from that autocomplete function on your emails to sophisticated chatbots and image generators. All of this uses a lot of energy and resources. And that has a lot of people asking, is AI bad for the environment? Let's find out for ourselves. To try to understand how AI impacts the environment, I'm stepping inside a supercomputer. OK. It's going to be loud. So welcome to our supercomputing cell. This is the engine room for Pawsey, and arguably it's, it's the cloud. Satonix is a joint research venture between government, universities and the CSIRO. So why is it so noisy? There's so many fans and pumping equipment keeping the systems operating and cool, they generate an awful lot of noise. One of the biggest challenges in a place like this is temperature control. As well as fans, these pipes are pushing cool water around the system to prevent overheating. So we'll use several million litres of water per annum. Around the world, big tech companies use similar infrastructure called data centres to train and run their AI products. And as demand for AI grows, so will the need for data centres and the water and energy needed to cool them. So you've spent some time with the most, one of the most powerful supercomputers in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, but this is only a fraction of the size of the systems that are training the AI models of today. So a system like GPT-5 reportedly would, would have used 50 times the compute power that we have here to just train the model, not just to operate it, but just to train. As a comparison, our system here, ranked as one of the most energy efficient in the world, this is about 1.5 megawatts of power, which in comparative terms is that of a small suburb or a large shopping centre. This building uses recycled water to keep cool, using an innovative geothermal method that draws on water in an underground aquifer. But that's not the case at every data centre. Many rely on the public drinking water supply and power grid. So I think we should be thinking about every time we pick up our phone to do something very cool with AI, that we understand the infrastructure, the power, the water, the service that's needed to provide that to you. It's hard to know exactly how much energy and water is consumed every time you use an AI tool, because most companies don't disclose that data. One 2024 US study estimates that a 100-word email generated by ChatGPT4 could gulp down around half a litre. But OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, estimates that a single query uses more like one fifteenth of a teaspoon of water. Scale those estimates across the two and a half billion queries made every day globally and, well, the mind starts to boggle. But if we just use the more conservative tiny teaspoon theory, that means about 20% of the water in this dam is consumed over the course of one year by ChatGPT alone. With several different figures out there, AI's full environmental footprint is hard to quantify. AI expert John Whittle says more transparency is needed. We don't have a lot of transparent information on how much electricity, how much water is used. So one of the problems with the teaspoon theory from OpenAI is we don't have the data and the methodology behind it. Hello. Hi, I'm Gemini. Last week, Google released its own research on the environmental impacts of its generative AI tool, Gemini. We can have a conversation about anything you like. Huh, anything? It found the median Gemini response used just five drops of water, citing big efficiency gains over the past 12 months. Professor Whittle says it's a welcome step towards transparency, but it's not the full picture. 
it's not just you using a Gen AI prompt at home. There's also the training of the AI models, which can take a lot of energy. There's building of the data centers, which can have a big environmental impact because they can be very large. One 2024 study estimated generative AI could result in up to two and a half million tonnes of electronic waste per year globally by 2030, the equivalent of discarding 13 billion iPhones. So when you look at the environmental impact of AI, you have to look at the full life cycle of AI. While tech companies are investing big in renewable energy, there's not enough to keep up, with some data centres requiring as much electricity as small cities. According to the International Energy Agency, this may be driving a new wave of fossil fuel use globally, particularly in the US. And why are they so energy intensive? because they're really big. Um, so data centers can be the size of 25 football fields. They've got um, lines and lines of servers in them that are crunching billions of data points every day. And that takes a lot of energy to get to actually do that. Around the world, some communities are pushing back against data centers, drinking their water, using their electricity and taking up land. They need to start protecting our communities and stop lining their own pockets. The data centers no more. Enough is enough. No more data centers. No more data centers. Similar concerns are starting to appear in Australia, which is emerging as a potential global data centre hub. Currently, there are 260 of them across the country, with a third of them in Sydney. I suppose when the first few went in, it was just a bit of business as usual. But before we knew it, there were five or six in the planning phase. And then before we knew it, three or four of them had been built. And now we're up to 11, either built or planned to be built here in Macquarie Park. Ride Council CEO Wayne Rylands is showing me around Sydney's Macquarie Park. His main gripe is building data centres on land he says could be better used for housing like the one that's planned to be built on a two-hectare site right next to a train station. We were expecting to get a lot of high-density housing here. Uh, so what it means is we're losing at least 1,000 houses. Wayne is also worried about tree clearing, power and water use. Just imagine in another 10 or 15 years, if we go from 11 data centres to 20 or 30 data centres, what the impact will be on things like water on things like energy. They will be massive impacts on our society. Data centres are critical infrastructure, though. We need them. We do need data centres, but they need to be well located. We need to be planning properly for them. Data centres currently use around 3.5 billion litres of Sydney's drinking water per annum, which is less than 1% of total demand. But Sydney Water says this could grow to about 25% within a decade. We need more water and we need to manage our water sources more sustainably so we can get better use out of what water we do have. Many data centres are already investing in technology that could see them run on recycled water or none at all. Meanwhile, engineer James Harrington is part of Sydney Water's efforts to future-proof the system by developing technology to use wastewater. As data centres become more prevalent, they require a lot of water for their cooling and we need to make sure that we're enabling that. So prepping for taking them off our drinking water supplies and providing them other water sources ensures that we've got enough drinking water source for our population. Back at the supercomputer, the AI dichotomy is on full display. While these servers are churning through electricity and water, they're also helping to solve some of the world's biggest environmental challenges, things like advanced climate modelling and bushfire predictions. While AI has its challenges, there are significant benefits from advanced computing that we see every day. The systems are getting more efficient. We are understanding their, their impact on the environment, but the demand is far outstripping the supply. So we've got some challenging times ahead of us. And the challenge is really, how can we maximise the benefits of AI whilst minimising the negative consequences? And for the record, ChatGPT agrees.